Jennifer Barrick Glasgow. She's my ex-boss. She's a charismatic privacy expert. She's、um, a distinguished, distinguished person. But at the same time, she is a mother, and she's a grandmother. <laughs> so one of these days, we were talking about parenting, and then she was like, "Sachiko, you know what? The most important thing that you can teach your kid is how to make good decisions." Right? I thought she was very smart, and she is very smart too. And you know what? Today I'm thinking this very thought is the perfect solution to protect your privacy in the current world of fourth industrial revolution. So let me just start giving you a little bit of a background. Now. You guys have realized, most likely, that the General Data Protection Regulation is here, right? You know that, right? 25th of May. Oh my goodness! Since that day, <laughs> data protection has arrived in Europe. <laughs> well, what you don't know is, oh, maybe you do know. After that, or、um, the the policymakers in Brussels are actually working on another privacy law that will sit on top of the. General data protection law,、uh, general data regulation. It's called the e-privacy regulation, and the idea behind it is actually to protect data, personal data, in the e-privacy, e-communication, and the digital arena. Right. Now, I also talked about fourth industrial revolution. I bet. Something that's not something that、uh, many people is familiar with. So let me just explain what I mean by that. First industrial Re revolution was all about manufacturing. That really, really started getting our modern society going. And then came the second, which is the computer. Third, which is the internet. And now, what we are having is this exciting, exciting moment where the online world and the offline world are merging. This is the fourth industrial revolution. Now it is incredible, incredible in the sense that the development is just happening every day, every second. And I was also impressed, you know, about that solar cell thing. You know, those those things. So many good ideas, new ideas. I think they are also supported by the possibilities that we have today. Um, there is even、uh, this、um, robot, artificial intelligence, that is called Sophia. <laughs> yeah, you've heard about it, Sophia. Amazing! Have you seen her smile? Have you seen her talk? Have you seen her sing? She is so incredible, and I think because she's so incredible, she was actually granted.、Uh, she had, was even granted citizenship. Right, first artificial intelligence robot that was granted citizenship out of all places in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> right. So、um, uh, another thing is I talked about merging. Right. We are even merging our body with the internet. You know there are these things called ingestibles which we、um, take it in in a capsule, and what we do is with an app. We actually monitor our health. These things are possible today, and also, you know, here, these things, this picture here. You know, these are these personal assistant AI. You know, these things have become so accessible. I just checked it out and found out that you can even start. And、uh, you know, the the cheapest one that are at around like 50 euros. You know, it's affordable, so we can all get these things. Well, but of course, these amazing development, these amazing opportunities that we're getting, all these things are actually fueled by data, right? And not only that, it also requires quite a complicated infrastructure to support it. Let me give you an example. So, this is actually called the LumaScape. And it's um, 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 created with, by this company called Luma Partners LLC, and what they do is they sort of try to depict the complicated advertisement world, 
right? And in, th in this particular case, um, it actually um, depicts the display advertisement. And you can see, you know, there are so many companies. All these logos uh, actually uh, represent the companies, of course. So the policymakers, when they saw that, when they're talking about e-privacy regulation, they thought, oh my goodness, so many data, so complicated, we have to have a strict law. <laughs> so what are we expecting? So the European Parliament and the European Commission um, these, policy, uh, 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 these two organs of the policymakers have decided that, well, you know what? Strengthened permission based law, right? This is actually um, based on the idea that you actually have consent, you ask for the permission of the people, and that's the only way that companies can use that information. To that, I have to also explain you a little bit of um, background, too. Now, this idea of consent is based on this legal philosophy of informational self-determination. It actually gave birth 40 years ago. And my question is, is, it, is this 40 years old concept really up to it to protect our privacy in the fourth industrial revolution? Well, it's all about permission, as I said, and the question here is, you know, when you take a look at this, you think, oh, it is so complicated. You know, I feel like it is almost unfair to ask you to give me permission, you know, for this. It's, you know, it's sort of unfair. And another thing, at least for, uh, for companies, it is very important. So many companies, but in real terms, on the very right, where it says people, these are the users, right? people, the only people who can actually ask permission because they have contact with the people are the websites, the publishers we call them, and social networks. So what happens to the rest of the infrastructure, right? Does that mean this is the end of advertisement? Or let me put it the other way around. Is this the end of free internet funded by advertisement as we know today. Well, the regulators don't think so. So there was this conference um, in October, the 40th International Conference of Data Protection and Privacy Commissioners. And there, regulators from around the world has declared in today's reality, considering all the complexity, we need to have a fresh approach to data protection. And they declared that ethics, data ethics is the way forward. I explain data ethics as, you know, helping people making good decisions. And you know, uh, I think this is, um, this is something that you, you, you really need to think. So, okay, good decisions. How can you help people make good decisions? I actually like to take an analogy of nannies and cleaning women. I mean, these two types of um, jobs are so important. They have been essential, vital in enabling us women to have careers, have great social life, and so on. But don't forget, they come into your house, your private home. So there is that bridge that I make about apps on your smartphone and, um, and AI assistance and so on. When I want to make good decisions, I have my own two-step approach, right? So step one, I ask myself, can I trust this app? Can I trust this AI assistant? Like when you're actually looking for a nanny, you know, how you would actually try to find out whether you can trust that person, you ask for reference, right? You know, that sort of a thing. In the sense of apps and AI and so on, what you can do is, well, learn about that company, read the privacy policy, for instance. 
And if your answer is, yes, I can trust, then let's move on to step two. Be mindful that they are around. And then you go on and ask the question, if I'm mindful, okay, so what is the benefit that I'm getting from this app, right? I'm getting more time, I'm getting uh, lots of help, and so on. And then weigh that up against the, 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 the feeling that you get that I need to accept their presence. And if you think that the benefit that you're getting from the app is greater than this feeling of I need to accept them, then you know what, I will say, go ahead and enjoy, go ahead and enjoy all the benefits that these apps bring, these uh, uh, you know, AI personal assistance brings. Hey, we're in the fourth industrial revolution, never before, things that's been so good to us women, right? Let's use the uh, opportunity. And in doing so, this ethical approach actually protects your data in a very balanced way, I think better than any prescriptive law can do. Thank you.